had control of, including Palestine. Antiochus IV had a policy of Hellenizing the whole area. So he deposed the high priest, sold the office of high priesthood to the brother of the high priest, who changed his name to the Greek name Jason. And a gymnasium was built in Jerusalem, and that means in the games, for Jewish people, something very difficult. They were naked, but for Greeks, of course, that was part of what happened at the games, how you, how you showed your strength by fighting naked or running naked or so on. For Jewish people, a shameful thing to do. So it's there in the heart of Jerusalem, a gymnasium. And Jewish people were affronted by this. There was opposition. But Antiochus IV put down the opposition and came into the temple and on another altar that he built offered a sacrifice to Zeus. This is called the abomination of desolation in the scriptures. So the Jewish people revolted uh, under Matthias Maccabeus. We call that the Maccabean revolt and eventually they won. And very proudly, some three years later, they rededicated the temple. And so this feast, in winter, is a bit like the Feast of Tabernacles. The emphasis is on God's care during the wilderness, but God's care for us in the temple, in restoring the temple. And, and during this festival, the Jewish people said, Never, never again to apostasy. It's the Feast of Hanukkah, we know it as. It takes place, this scene, in Solomon's portico. It's the oldest of the porticos, on the eastern side of the outermost court of the temple. All four colonnades or cloisters were walled to the outside, but open to the courtyard inside, and the eastern side was protected from the cold winter wind coming up from the Kedron Valley. And it's there that Jesus was speaking, and it's there, incidentally, that the apostles did their preaching in the temple sometime later. It's possible, we should say, that John chapter 10 verses 22 to 39 is a duplicate of passages in chapter 7 and 8. We have here, in chapter 10, a nicely balanced arrangement and a great clarity of thought that makes it a very fitting climax to the public ministry of Jesus. In it, you'll notice there are two main questions. Is Jesus the Messiah? Verse 24. And does he make himself God? Verse 33. Each response ends with the theme of Jesus' unity with his Father, and each receives, of course, a very unfavorable response from the Jewish listeners. Interestingly, these two questions are exactly the same questions in the Synoptic Gospels during the trial of Jesus at the Sanhedrin. The high priest asks Jesus if he is the Messiah and also asks, are you the Son of God? Isn't that fascinating, huh? How the same material in the Synoptics and in John's Gospel are there, but they've been wound together, put together, woven together so differently. Jesus' response to the question of whether he's the Messiah or not, begin, he begins by, by saying, look at my works. Read what I'm doing, can't you? And he speaks then of the sheep who do hear his voice. And of course he ends with the statement, the Father and I are one. We're unified in what we do. 
the Jews charged Jesus of blasphemy. That's the only occurrence of such a charge in John's Gospel. And Jesus then proceeds to undo the charge of blasphemy by using Scripture itself in a very rabbinic style argument. If Scripture speak of human beings who receive God's Word as God's, how can it be blasphemy for Jesus to speak of himself as the Son of God? He then says he's been consecrated by God. A fascinating word, especially on this feast of the reconsecration of the temple. Jesus is hinting at, and we can see more clearly, he's the new location where God is going to dwell. He is the new temple of God. The scene ends, chapter, verses 40 to 42, with Jesus crossing the river Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing. Our minds go right back to the opening passages of John's Gospel after the prologue. It's a fitting inclusion, if you like, to the whole of the public ministry of Jesus, beginning with the Baptist, ending with the Baptist. So, once again, over these two chapters, we've listened to the voice of the Master through the mind and the heart of the beloved disciple. We've watched that magnificent story of the man born blind, as he is enlightened, the man himself, as he is enlightened by Jesus and empowered to speak so insightfully, so wonderfully before the Pharisees who are trapped in their dead theology and who move more and more into the powers of darkness. We see a man who believes in Jesus and we see the authorities expel him and like-minded souls. We've listened then to how Jesus castigates the Jewish authorities as bad shepherds and describe himself both as the good shepherd and the gates. The good shepherd who lay, lay down his life for his sheep and the gate, the gateway into life. I've come that you may have life and lead your life to the full. And finally, we've seen for the last time the crux of the fundamental disagreement between the young church and the synagogue. Is Jesus the Messiah? Is he really the Son of God? Jesus' answer is to point out to his works and to speak of from his living relationship with his Father. It reminds them of what good shepherds are like, what bad shepherds are like. And this happens to the backdrop of Hanukkah, the feast of the dedication of the temple. As Jesus himself is saying, I am the one whom the Father has consecrated. I am the real temple. I am that place where God meets us. Thank you.